When you write the equilibrium constant expression, um, you want to keep the concentrations of solids and liquids out of the expression. So, so you don't include solids and liquids. Um, and the idea is that basically the concentration of solids and liquids are going to stay constant um, throughout the course of the reaction. So remember how you find um, a concentration, you're looking at the uh, moles of the, the, the um, compound per um, liters of solution. And so if you have a solid, the, the moles are going to change, but the volume will also change at, at, the, same, at the same rate. So solids and liquids do not, um, do not go in the equilibrium constant expression. So let's just practice writing some, some equilibrium constant expressions um, that, for reactions that involve solids. So for this first one here, you see you have a solid as a reactant, so you just do um, lead uh, times concentration of lead times the chloride ion. Oh, that needs to be squared. So you need to raise to the second power over here. Oops. Square that. Um, and then down here, you have just the um, concentration of carbon dioxide. So you don't include this solid, and you don't include this solid either. As long as some of it, uh, some of the solid is there, um, the equilibrium will exist. But you don't need to include that in the equilibrium constant expression. So here are some more examples. Just try to try to work these out, and then check your answers. Um, in this first one, you have a liquid, so you don't want to include the liquid. So include everything but the liquid. It's still products of reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. Um, and over here, you have a solid, so don't put that solid in. Don't put this solid in as well. Um, and so it's just products squared over reactants squared. Don't forget your stoichiometric coefficients. There we go. Okay, so keeping that in mind, um, All right, so yeah, just keeping that in mind, you know, don't, don't ever put the solids or liquids into the equilibrium constant expression. Um, and the only thing that can go in the equilibrium constant expression are equilibrium concentrations or equilibrium pressures. So in, in this problem, they ask you to calculate Kp uh, given equilibrium pressures. So you have a mixture of hydrogen and nitrogen gases that are allowed to um, reach equilibrium at a certain temperature. Uh, the equilibrium concentrations here, or the equilibrium pressures, are 7.38 atmospheres of hydrogen, 2.46 atmospheres of nitrogen, and 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.166 atmospheres of ammonia. Um, so the first thing you want to do is set up your equilibrium constant expression. So that's what you have here. You have your K is your products of the reactants versus the stoichiometric coefficients. And then just plug in those numbers. So you look for ammonia. Ammonia is 0.166. So put that here. Don't forget to square it. And then multiply by hydrogen and nitrogen. And then when you work all that out, you get your Kp. Remember, K doesn't have any units. K is unitless. So whenever you're calculating that, it's going to be, uh, it's not going to have any units. All right, so let's continue on here. Um, now, what happens when you have um, initial concentrations instead of equilibrium? You can only put equilibrium uh, concentrations into the equilibrium constant expression. But, um, but sometimes what you do is you're, you start with your, you have a known concentration of your reactants, and then you let it react, uh, and then you can measure the concentration of the products. And knowing just the stoichiometry of the reaction, uh, you'll be able to figure out how much of your reactants you have left over as well. So you need the stoichiometry, you need the uh, equilibrium constant expression in order to do that. So in this problem, they tell you you initially have a, you know, a certain concentration of, uh, of hydrogen and a certain concentration of iodine, and you're making some hydrogen iodide. So we've seen this reaction before. Um, so they give you your initial concentration. So this is one initial concentration, and this is the other initial concentration. And they tell you at equilibrium, this is the equilibrium concentration of your product. Now you can't just plug all these numbers into the equilibrium constant expression because two of them are initial concentrations. All right, so what we can do uh, is set up something called an ice table. So we have our reaction here, and notice that for every, look at just, just looking at the stoichiometry, for every one mole of hydrogen, uh, you react with one mole of iodine, you make two moles of hydrogen iodide. 
So if I use up one mole of this, I'm going to use up one mole of this. I'm going to make two moles of that. All right, so if I initially have one times 10 to the negative 3 uh, molar concentration of hydrogen and two times the negative 3 molar concentration of iodine, and I don't have any products initially, so I don't have it, this is going to be zero. So I know that I'm going to use up my reactants and I'm going to make products. But I don't know how much I'm going to use up yet. Just, just setting up this table, I don't know. But I know that for every one mole of this, I use up one mole of this because there's just, there's a one in the, in the reaction. Just looking at those stoichiometric coefficients, and I know I'm going to make two moles of the, of the H5. So my change line here, um, I know I'm, I have reactants, so um, I'm reacting my reactants. So I'm going to put a negative here because I'm going to use some up. Uh, so the number of moles are going to be used up here. This is also a reactant. If, if one reactant is, is decreasing in concentration, the other reactant is decreasing in concentration, which means that the product is going to be increasing in concentration. So I'm going to subtract my reactants. I'm going to add my products. So my product has a positive sign there. Um, I have just x, x, and 2x, and that comes from the stoichiometry. This is 1, 1, and 2. Your change is the same, 1, 1, and 2. So reactants, you're subtracting, and products you are gaining. And then I just plug it in here at, e at equilibrium. It's whatever I started with. This is my initial concentration minus my change. And this is my initial concentration of iodine minus my change. And then this is my initial concentration of hydrogen iodide plus my change. So I'm adding because it's a product here. Um, and, then, and then I go back up to the um, question and they tell me, they basically tell me this number. They tell me that at equilibrium, this is how much product I make. One, I have 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3 molar of this. And this is this is what I can you know measure experimentally. And I know that has to be equal to 2x because that's what my table tells me here. For every one mole of this, I use up one mole of this, I make two moles here. So this is going to be 2x. So 2x is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 3. So if I divide both sides by 2, I can solve for x, which is 9.35 times 10 to the negative 4. This x has to be equal to this x and this x. So I can plug that in there. So I have my initial minus my x gives me this number. My initial minus my x gives me um, this number here. So I have all my uh, equilibrium concentrations. And now I can take those that, that last row and plug it into the equilibrium constant expression. So I have my, make sure that at this point you're using 2, 2x, right, because I, I need this 1.87 times 10 negative 3. That's how much I actually make at equilibrium. That, that's what they tell me the problem. So that's going to go here. And then on the bottom, I have um, this 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5. All right. I put in all my concentrations. Oops. There we go. Multiply these together. And you should, you should end up with um, 51 as your equilibrium constant.